Hey everybody, uh, I finally got a few minutes to get Vault up to date on Opal. Uh, Opal just released 0.8 and I had worked on it previously and just hadn't had the time to actually get it out the door. So today they released and I thought I'll spend a few minutes and get it out the door. So, um, so let me show you I, the big thing I'm excited about here is source maps. They were somewhat broken in Opal 0.7 and so having them back is really nice. And I don't think I've actually done a tutorial showing how to use them. So um, in point eight, uh, you just run your server like normal and you'll get source maps for all of your code. Uh, by default, we don't do source maps for, um, for Volt and Opal uh, itself. And this is mostly just a performance thing. It, it saves a lot of time loading the page. Uh, if you do want uh, maps for everything, you can do maps equals all. Uh, as an environment variable and that will enable it for everything and you can also do maps equals false to disable source maps which will give you a slight performance improvement on page load but not a ton. So we're just gonna leave it off which gives us source maps on our code and so I've got this demo app here and if I go ahead and load it um, what you'll see is if you go into sources um, there is actually let me just remove this for a sec. Uh, if you go into sources, there's now, uh, in addition to kind of the normal source files that you'll see where, you know, you're going to see, um, normally you'd see like the JavaScript files, instead you'll get this Opal source maps directory, and you can go in there and you can browse and you can see um, all the Ruby code that, you, that you've written. Um, so what we're going to do actually is just show an example of using this kind of in production. So in this example, I'm calling save on the model. Uh, the correct method name is save bang. So if I don't actually, if I actually just call that uh, without calling bang on it, um, now when I go and try to save, uh, I get this uncaught method error. And previously, you would have seen, um, you know, lines of JavaScript code. But here, um, for our Ruby code that is source mapped will actually see the Ruby files. So uh, here I can click and I can go and I can see it brings me right to the line. Now the thing is, is you'll see a lot of these app.js and this is actually um, part of Volt and Opal. So what we want to do is we want to black box these. So in Chrome we can go, we can hit this little uh, settings pa panel. Uh, we can go down to the bottom and say manage flame framework black boxing. And then let's see, we can bring this up. And I've got this um, this string here that um, I'll put in the docs that if you paste in, that'll basically black box everything for you. And so now if we get rid of this error and we try it again, you'll notice that these are grayed out. I kind of wish Chrome would remove these, but that's okay. And then the first line that's not grayed out is our, our code where the error happened. And you can see it up the stack trace. We, if there were more sort of parts of our code involved, we get that up there. If we enabled all, we'd see these as this one's in kernel and we'd see the different parts of Opal that this comes from. So here I can click and I can, you know, see, okay, I, I messed it up. Um, I can go ahead and change it. Let's save. And it's gonna reload and then you can see it updates. And now, um, now if we go to save it, it all works. So that's interesting, but another thing that we might want to do is uh, stepping. So I don't have anything too interesting as far as examples go. I'll just show you so just a real basic example here. Um, say we were calling some method. Um, and what I'm going to do is this automatically reloads. I'm going to go ahead and put a breakpoint uh, on one here. And there's sort of a bug in Chrome that you'll notice, and occasionally you get this where it actually jumps you down to the wrong line. So let me just do this real quick and see if this fixes it. Okay, I don't know why it's that. I'll, I'll figure that out before I release 1.0. 
Uh, but now, if I go ahead and uh, hit save again, you're going to notice it actually paused in the debugger when it got to this line. And then we can step through. Uh, for some reason, it's skipping over that line. I'm sorry, I don't know why. Um, but you can see we can step into it, and it's actually jumping us through the lines of Ruby code. And then uh, let, me do, let me do a better example here. Um, uh, if we do this, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and put it on, on this line here. Hit save. We get stopped there. You can see that we can actually see our local variables. Um, it tells us what they're currently set to. And because in Opal, um, in Opal, local Ruby variables are also local JavaScript variables, we get access to that. Um, you know, we're paused. So we could do all the things we would normally do in JavaScript debugging um, within the, the current debugger. So anyway, so hopefully that gives you an idea of uh, what it's like to use source maps in, in Volt and Opal. And uh, I'll try to get a couple of those bugs fixed before I roll out 0.95. But uh, you, I'm going to do a pre-release gem, and you can start using it today. Thanks. One thing I just forgot to mention is that uh, we had to change the way config base index works. Uh, you'll probably have different code if you're upgrading, but this you need to basically replace. Uh, this used to be JavaScript files, and it would iterate through, and now you just have a JavaScript tags. Uh, and the reason we did that is Opal spits out a couple extra things. Uh, the one other thing not working yet is uh, asset pre-compilation. I'm going to get that done and out the door before we release. Thanks.